Math 6, Quarter 4, Week 5, Milk Base. Let's learn about Problem Solving Involving Data in a Pie Graph. This is from Learner's Packet Lip. Hello kids, it's me, Teacher Frel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit the notification bell for the latest video. You can also follow my Facebook page, Teacher Frel TV. For today's lesson in Math 6, we will discuss about problem solving involving data in a pie graph. For most essential learning competencies, solves routine and non-routine problems using data presented in a pie graph. Hello! Last time, we learned about constructing a pie graph. For this lesson, we will learn how to solve the routine and non-routine problems using data presented in a pie graph. Let us study the pie graph below using the data presented. Example, Mr. Reyes, a school principal, conducted a survey on where pupils would most like to go on a field trip. The choices he gave then were Museo Pambata, National Museum, Oceanarium, Science Centrum, and Avalon Zoo. All 360 pupils cast one vote each. So using this table, list down all the destinations. The destinations are Avalon Zoo, Oceanarium, Science Centrum, Museo Pambata, and National Museum. The number of pupils. There were 90 pupils most likely to go to Avalon Zoo. 180 pupils most likely to go to Oceanarium. 36 pupils most likely to go to Science Centrum. 45 pupils most likely to go to Museo Pambata. And 9 pupils most likely to go to National Museum. For the total of 360 number of pupils. To get the angle sector, use this formula. Angle sector equals frequency of data divided by total frequency times 100. For Avalon Sioux, to get the angle sector, divide 90 by the total number of pupils, 360, times 100 equals 1 fourth or 25%. There were 25% most likely to go to Avalon Zoo, as you can see in the graph. There were 1 fourth or 25%. So for Oceanarium, the angle sector is 1 half or 50%, as you can see in the pie graph. There were 1 half or 50% most likely to go to Oceanarium. For Science Centrum, the angle sector is 1 over 10 or 10%. There were 10% or 1 10 most likely to go to Science Centrum. Museo Pambata. The angle sector is 1 8 or 12.5%. For National Museum, the angle sector is 1 over 40 or 2.5%. For the total of 100%. Now, let us answer some questions using this pie graph. First question, which field trip destination got the highest percentage of votes? The answer is, Oceanarium got the highest percentage vote which is 50% of the total pupils based on the data presented. Second question, what percentage of pupils favor Avalon Sioux? The answer is, to calculate percentage, one-fourth of 100% or one-fourth times 100% equals 25% or 90, which is the number of pupils who wants to go to Avalon Sioux, divided by the total number of pupils, 360, equals 25%. 
So, 25% of the pupils favored Avilon Zoo. Third question, how many times as many pupils like to go to Oceanarium compared to those who like to go to Avilon Zoo? The answer is, get both data of pupils favored to go to Oceanarium, which is one half, and pupils like to go to Avilon Zoo, which is one fourth. So, one half divided by one fourth or one half times one fourth or one half times four over one equals two or 180 divided by 90 equals two so the answer is twice the number of pupils like to go to oceanarium compare the avalon zoo fourth question what percentage of the pupils survey wants to go to science centrum and here is the answer one tenth of one hundred percent equals one tenth times one hundred percent equals ten percent or thirty six which is the number of pupils who wants to go to science centrum divided by the total number of pupils three hundred sixty equals ten percent so ten percent of pupils wanted to go to science centrum and now, let us do learning task 1. Answer each question based on the pie graph below. Total profit earned in sale. So for the first question, which item gave the store about one-fourth of its profit? And the answer is pots and pans. As you can see in the pie graph, it gave the store about one-fourth of its profit. Second question, if the profits from eating and cooking utensils were combined, would it be exceeding the profit earned from plates? Explain. If you add 14% of cooking utensils plus 10% of eating utensils, the total is 24%. So, it is not exceeding the profit earned from plates because plates has 38%. So the answer is no. Third question. Which two kinds of items gave the store half of its total profit? And here is the answer. Plates and glasses. Because if we add 38% of plates plus 12% of glasses, the total is 50%. These two items gave the store half of its total profit, which is 50%. Fourth question, if the total profit earned was 45000 how much profit was earned from pots and pans? You are going to multiply 45,000 pesos, which is the total profit earned, times 22%, which is the percentage of pots and pans. So, 45,000 times 22% equals 9,900. So, the answer is, the profit earned from pots and pans is 9,900 pesos. Number 5. Which three categories gave a combined profit that is the same as that earned from the plates? And here is the answer. The three categories gave a combined profit is pots and pans which is 22% glasses which is 12% and others which is 4% for the total of 38% so the three categories if we combine that is the same as that earned from the plates for learning task 2 the graph below shows the number of students per grade level enrolled in an art class during summer so the title of the pie graph is students enrolled in an art class during summer grade 6 11 over 20 grade 3 3 over 20 grade 4 1 over 10 grade 5 1 over 5 first question which grade level had the greatest number of enrollees what percent of the whole art class is this number the answer is, grade 6 had the greatest number of enrollees. Why? So to get the percent of the whole art class in this number, divide the number of grade 6 
11 divided by the total number of students, 20. 11 divided by 20 equals 55%. So that means there were 55% of grade 6 students enrolled in an art class during summer. Number 2. If there were 20 enrollees, how many grade 4 students enrolled during summer? Grade 4 students enrolled during summer is 1 over 10. Multiply by 20 enrollees. So 1 times 20 equals 20 divided by 10 equals 2. So the answer is, there were 2 grade 4 students enrolled during summer. Number 3. What percent of the enrollees are not grade 6 students? 20 minus 11 grade 6 students equals 9. 9 divided by 20 equals 45%. 45% of the enrollees are not grade 6 students. Number 4. Which two grade levels comprise one-fourth of the total number of enrollees? So the answer is grade 3 and grade 4. 110 of grade 4 times 20, which is the total number of enrollees, equals 2. 1 times 20 equals 20 divided by 10 equals 2. There were 2 grade 4 students. Then, 3 over 20, which is the number of grade 3 students. Then add the number of grade 4 students. 3 plus 2 equals 5. So, 5 is one-fourth of the total number of enrollees. One-fourth of 20 is 5. And for number 5, suppose there is an additional grade 6 students enrolled in the class, what will happen to its sector in the graph? What will happen to the sector for other grade levels? So, the answer for this is... The fraction for grade 6 will increase from 11 over 20 to 12 over 21. The sectors for grade 3, grade 4, and grade 5 will shrink slightly to accommodate the increased proportion of grade 6 to maintain a total of 100% in the pie chart. For learning task 3, a school organized a fair through which it collected a sum of 5,880 pesos where games collected one-fourth of the total amount. The pie graph shows the amount of money collected by different stalls. The title of the pie graph is School Fair Stall. Number 1. Find the sum of money collected by the game stall. One-fourth of the sum of money is collected by the game stall. Multiply by the total number of money collected, 5,880 pesos. So, 1 times 5,880 pesos divided by 4 equals 1,470 pesos. The answer is, the game stall collected 1,470 pesos. Number 2. What percentage of the total money was collected by the souvenir stall? The amount collected by the food stall is 2,352 pesos. The amount collected by the game stall is 1,470 pesos. And the amount collected by the drink stall is 882 pesos. For the total of 4,704 pesos. Then subtract 5,880 pesos minus 4,704 pesos equals 1,176 pesos. Then divide it to 5,880 pesos. Multiply by 100 or times 100 equals 20%. So the answer is the souvenir stall collected 20% of the total money. Number 3. What fraction of the total money was collected by the food stall? The total money collected by the food stall is 2,352 pesos. Divide it by 5,880 pesos which is the total amount of money collected by the school fair stall. Equals 0 0.4 or in fraction it is 4 over 10. Reduce this to lowest term and that is... 
2 over 5 or 2 fifths. So the answer is the food stall collected 2 fifths of the total. Number 4. What fraction of the total money collected by the drink stall? The total money collected by the drink stall is 882 pesos. Divide it by 5,880 pesos which is the total amount of money collected by the school fair stall equals 0. 0.15 or 15 hundreds. In fraction, it is 3 over 20. So the answer is the drink stall collected 3 over 20 of the total. Number 5. What percentage of the total money was collected by the food and drink stall together? So the total money collected by the food is 2,352 and the total money collected by the drinks is 882 pesos. 2,352 pesos plus 882 pesos equals 3,234. Divide it to 5,880 pesos. 3,234 divided by 5,880 times 100 equals 55%. So the answer is, food and drinks together collected 55% of the total. For learning task 4, every day, Susie's Bake Shop makes 5 kinds of cookies. The graph below shows the number of each kind of cookies made out of 100 cookies. The title of the pie graph is Cookies Made Daily at Susie's Bake Shop. Answer each problem based on the graph above. Number 1. Which two kinds of cookies make up of 50% of all the cookies? Explain. Chocolate chips is 35. Sugar cookies is 22. 35 plus 22 equals 57. So the answer is... Chocolate chips and sugar cookies make up more than 50% of all the cookies. As you can see in the graph, the two kinds of cookies make up 50% of all the cookies. Number 2. Suppose the bake shop will make 500 cookies using the given ratio for the 5 kinds of cookies, how many chocolate chips will the bake shop make? Chocolate chips make up 35% of the cookies. Number of chocolate chip cookies is 35% multiplied by 500 cookies. 35 over 100 times 500 or 35 times 500 divided by 100 equals 175. The bake shop will make 175 chocolate chip cookies. And for number 3, one day, the bake shop decides to make almond cookies and vanilla cookies instead of sugar cookies. If the number of almond cookies and number of vanilla cookies are the same, what percent of all the cookies are vanilla cookies? Sugar cookies are replaced by almond cookies and vanilla cookies. Since they are made in equal amounts, each will take up half of the 22% previously used for sugar cookies. So the percent for vanilla cookies equals 22 divided by 2 equals 11%. Vanilla cookies will make up 11% of all the cookies. So kids, do you understand our lesson for today? Wow! Good job! Kids, I hope you learn a lot from this lesson. Until our next topic, bye-bye kids. Thanks for watching.